What if I told you that you could reduce your DHT by more than 50% with just a fraction of the usual finasteride dose? Sounds too good to be true, but it's not. Today, I will break down the science of low-dose finasteride and how it might help you avoid side effects without giving up the results. Finasteride is a type 2 5 alpha reductase inhibitor, which means that it blocks an enzyme in your body that converts testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, or DHT for short. Now, DHT is the main hormone responsible for main pattern baldness, or hair loss, or androgenic alopecia, whatever you call it. It binds to receptors in the hair follicles, causing them to shrink over time and eventually stop producing healthy hair. So, by reducing DHT, finasteride directly targets the root cause of androgenic alopecia. It is available in two common dosages, 5 mg daily, the FDA-approved dosage for benign prostatic hyperplasia, and 1 mg daily, the FDA-approved dose for male pattern baldness, or hair loss, or whatever you call it. But here's something important you do not necessarily need one milligram per day to get great results. I will get back to this in a second. First, let's talk about why we actually get side effects from finasteride. You see, finasteride doesn't just reduce DHT in the scalp. It lowers DHT throughout the whole body. And that is where the side effects come into play. DHT plays important roles in tissue like the prostate, the skin, and especially the central nervous system. It's involved in sexual function, mood regulation, and even cognitive performance. When DHT levels drop too much systemically, you can experience things like reduced libido, erectile dysfunction, fatigue, or whatever we call it, like brain fog, anxiety, or depression, which is also super rare. And I just want to say these side effects are not common. Most studies report rates in 1-2% to in clinical trials, but they do happen, especially at higher doses or in sensitive individuals. I know that there are people out there like Kevin Mann saying that testosterone and finasteride are just super great for your brain and there's definitely no side effects at all. But let's just use some common sense here, guys. Let's look at the so-called vaccine, you know, for the specific disease you can't mention on YouTube anymore. 1% of these people are getting scar tissue on their heart and there's also heart palpitation associated with it and a lot of strokes are getting reported at the moment. We also have stuff like the semiglutamide, the GLP-1 antagonists, which is the uh, Saxenda, I think it's called, um, the weight loss drug, you know. 1% of those people, they get suicidal thoughts. So there's a lot of people in the 1% category who get crazy side effects from drugs. Even like antidepressant will cause suicidal thoughts in certain individuals. So it is only common sense that a very low percentage will have these super weird and crazy side effects from finasteride. Just take that into account. But I'll also say that these effects are generally reversible after stopping or just lowering the dose. And this is why dosing really matters, why more is not always better. And this is where things get really interesting. Clinical studies have shown that you can get nearly the same benefit at lower doses with potentially lower risk of side effects. In a 1999 pharmacokinetic study, researchers found that 0.2 mg finasteride daily suppressed serum DHT by 55%. 1 mg daily suppressed it by 65%. So with just 0.2 mg, you are getting over 80% of the DHT reduction with less drug in your system. A 2010 meta-analysis published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology analyzed multiple trials and confirmed the following. Doses from 0.2 mg to 0.5 mg daily were clinically effective for hair regrowth, not just hair loss stopping, but regrowth. And it were also better tolerated by some patient compared to the full 1 mg. A 2011 dose comparison study, patients who couldn't tolerate 1 mg often found that 0.25 mg were more tolerable and effective for them. This has led many clinicians to recommend a 
lowest effective dose strategy, starting with small and tight trading up only if necessary. Which means that they're going to start with the smallest dose possible and then they will titrate up only if necessary. Finasteride works best when it is taken consistently and if it's tolerated long term. If a low dose gets you there without the side effects, it may actually be better than going all in with the one milligram a day right away. Now that you understand the risk and how lower doses can actually help, let's just look into the particular strategies for safe use. Number one, the obvious one, start low, stay consistent, which means begin with a low dose. I would personally, if it were myself, recommend a dose between 0.25 to 0.5 milligrams daily or even every other day. Give your body some time to adjust. Side effects often appear in the first few weeks, so starting low might help you test tolerance without flooding your system completely. Second advice, split your tablets. Most people buy the one milligram tablets and you can actually just use a pill cutter to split the pills into halves or quarters. For example, 0.25 is just a quarter of the standard tablet. This approach gives you a little bit more control over how much you're actually taking and you can take it more consistently than taking it every other day. Third advice, consider topical finasteride. Topical versions of finasteride are becoming increasingly popular because they may reduce scalp DHC with less systemic absorption. A 2014 study published in the Skin Pharmacology and Physiology found that topical finasteride applied once daily resulted in lower blood levels of the drug, but it still had a strong effect on scalp DHC, which basically means it doesn't go systemic but stays on your scalp. This doesn't though guarantee that you'll avoid all side effects, but for the super sensitive users, it is worth considering. Five, track your response. Use a journal or an app or whatever you prefer to just track some physical and mental states for the first few months. If you notice side effects, stop all over the doses and reassess or even consult a doctor that will always be my first advice. Remember, most side effects, if they occur, are fully reversible. And of course, number six, Work with a medical professional, especially if you have a history of depression, hormonal issues, or sexual dysfunction. It is best to consult a doctor before and during the treatment. Finasteride is a prescription medication for a reason. Do not self-experiment blindly. It can be super dangerous. And here is a small bonus tip. If you're concerned that you might get side effects from finasteride and you're concerned about the post finasteride syndrome that it might actually occur to you, I have another small suggestion that I would recommend myself if I had to do it, and that would be go on a low dose of finasteride, let's say 0.2 milligrams a day, and then maybe supplement with another thing like a androgen antagonist like RU5841 so that you'll reduce some of your DHC and the remainder that you still have, you're going to block it with IU5841. If you're concerned about side effects, I would personally try and go with a low dose of finasteride paired with a low dose of IU5841. Let's say 20 milligrams of IU5841 on a daily basis and then 0.2 milligrams of finasteride on a daily basis too. Hence, you are not lowering your systemic DHC too much and you're not taking so much IU5841 that there's a high risk that it might go systemic. Now, I just want to touch on nocebo for a second because it is also important to acknowledge the nocebo effect. When expecting negative effects increases the likelihood of of experiencing a uh, look at it like a reverse placebo effect you see much like kevin mann some researchers believe that the public discourse around post finasteride syndrome may contribute to this in a small percentage of users this doesn't mean that symptoms aren't real but it means that approaching finasteride calmly with data in hand is better than going in anxious and completely uninformed, hence also why I'm doing these videos. So just to clarify, I'm not saying that I'm siding completely with Kevin Mann from the uh, Hair Cafe. I'm not saying I'm siding with him, but I'm not saying that he is wrong either. I think he's onto something, but unfortunately I do not agree with his complete disregard for side effects. As I just mentioned, we get side effects from taking vaccines, we get side effects from taking anesthesia, we get side effects from taking weight loss drugs or depression drugs, whatever we're taking, there's always, and you see that in every drug, even 
like stuff like a paracetamol, some people will get crazy side effects from that and it can be really dangerous. So why would it not be obvious that we're also getting side effects from finasteride? Personally, I just think it's a little bit overhyped with post finasteride syndrome, but I do think that there's a small percentage of people who does experience them. So I do not agree with Kevin Mann entirely, but I think he's onto something that the fear mongering is just completely bonkers and out of control. But used wisely, finasteride can be part of a safe and effective long-term hair loss protocol. If you want to dive deeper into low-dose strategies, topical alternative, or other hair loss treatments, subscribe and stay tuned. More breakdown videos are coming soon.